In this video we're going to talk about buffering capacity. And this is important for anaerobic events. In the last video we talked about lactate threshold. and anaerobic threshold. And both of these are measuring essentially the same thing. Lactate le threshold is a little bit more invasive, so it involves a blood test. And this one involves VCO2. measuring the expired CO2. And both of them essentially measure the same thing. So that point at which the anaerobic system has to kick in, has to supply energy. And this could be because we're working out maybe aerobically and then we start to increase the intensity too much and the aerobic system can no longer meet the demands, the energy de demands. So the anaerobic system has to kick in. And the main reason is there's just not enough oxygen present. So too little oxygen. And when that happens then lactic acid lactic acid is going to build up. So where buffering capacity is going to help out is you can buffer this lactic acid here as it starts to build up. And then you can go a little longer. So when you're working out, the more buffer you have, the longer you can last. And so we have different types of buffers. We have sodium bicarbonate. And that's baking soda. That's an N right there, if you can't tell. So your body produces that in the blood. You can also store it in the muscle. And you have muscle phosphates. And these help buffer lactic acid as it builds up, because if too much lactic acid builds up, muscles are going to start to fatigue. Now, if you start a training program and you're doing, let's say, mainly anaerobic exercise, you can increase your anaerobic training or endurance, I should say, your anaerobic endurance. so that you can last a little bit long, longer by increasing the amount of buffer that's stored in the body. At about eight weeks, if you're doing pretty intense training, you can increase it as much as 50% of what you used to have. So you can have about 50% more buffer. Now this is all relative to intensity, so your intensity has to be pretty high. And you have to build up a lot of lactic acid for your body to start to store more uh, buffers or sodium bicarbonate. The best way to do that is through some sort of interval training. So I'm doing heart rates right here, so this is going to measure heart rate, and I know I've mentioned this in other videos, but I just want to bring this home. Heart rate is probably the easiest way for you to really tell intensity if you're doing some sort of intense cardiorespiratory training and just because it's cardiorespiratory training doesn't mean the anaerobic system won't have to kick in. We had mentioned anaerobic threshold earlier. So this is the point at which the anaerobic system has to kick in. So as long as I train under here, the energy demands are met by the aerobic system. So it can supply enough energy because there's going to be enough oxygen, O2, 
to continue to produce some ATP, it is in triphosphate. But if I start training above this level, I won't be able to stay there very long because the aerobic system can't supply enough energy, so therefore anything past that line, the anaerobic system will have to kick in and start supplying more energy. So that means I won't be able to stay there very long and eventually I'll have to drop back down below this line to recover because lactic acid is going to increase. So the best thing for me to do is do some form of interval training, shortening this rest interval and lengthening this amount of time so that I can start to produce more sodium bicarbonate to buffer lactic acid. And eventually what was, change color here, so that first line I drew was my old anaerobic threshold. I can start to move that up so I can train at higher intensities. So down here, doing this interval, the aerobic system could still supply enough energy. See, I haven't gone above that line. Now the last thing I want to talk about, move over here, is if you do a lot of anaerobic training and you're not accustomed to it, so a lot of, let's say, muscle endurance training, I'm going to change colors here, and you're not accustomed to it, lactic acid can make you nauseous. And that happens, it's what, your body can't buffer enough lactic acid, so your natural pH level in your blood is 7.3. And if your pH drops much below 7.3, you're going to get sick. So you'll start to feel kind of nauseous, maybe lightheaded. And uh, if that happens, the fastest way for your body to get back to homeostasis is to get rid of some acid. Well, the fastest way it can do that is cause you to vomit. There's a lot of hydrogen ions in the stomach, so the, the fastest way for uh, your body to get rid of that for you to vomit and then that'll get rid of some acid out of your body. So if you ever do any kind of muscle endurance training where you're doing push-ups, sit-ups, lunges, lunges are a big one because they're large muscle groups so a lot of lactic acid is going to build up, lunges, uh, maybe sprinting, start doing a lot of anaerobic activity where a lot of lactic acid is going to build up. And these would have to be longer distance lunges, I mean sprints. Um, you do these for one minute, two minutes, definitely for two minutes. The longer you go, the more lactic acid is going to build up. So you do activities like this and you're not accustomed to it, it can make you sick. I've seen this before when people are doing pre and post testing and they've never worked out before and they do a lot of push-ups and then they do a lot of sit-ups for two minutes and then they may, maybe they do some lunges for two minutes and what happens is their body can't buffer that lactic acid so they start to become sick because it filters out of the bloodstream or if the, the um, pH level in the blood drops because all that lactic acid fil filters out and it starts to make you sick and so then your body has to compensate, it wants to get back to normal get homeostasis back and so it causes you to vomit to get rid of all that excess hydrogen that's building up and making you more acidic. So I hope this kind of gave you a rough overview of buffering capacity and we kind of linked it to what we had already talked about with lactate threshold and anaerobic threshold. If you haven't watched those videos go back and watch them. I think you'll enjoy them. And I hope this kind of, um, if you weren't aware of it before, hopefully this will kind of educate you on why if you do a lot of repetition and you're not accustomed to it, why you maybe have felt nauseous in the past. So I hope you enjoy this and I'll see you in the next video.